Get your half-assed, half-assed, half-assed reporter James Come, the guy on the bike. Special shout out to our viewers in Bulgaria and Northern Ontario. Okay, we're gonna run into the Michella Vicheni Gallery and we'll also run up to the Jack Hanley Gallery. Now we're going to take a look at an exhibition by one of my favorite painters and a guy that in a lot of ways is a legend among paint heads and that's Andrew Masulo. Well, they're calling this exhibition recent paintings, and uh, I'll give you a little snippet of the press release. What does an artist do with paintings he can't finish? Or with finished paintings he once embraced but now rejects? Andrew Masula answers these questions in silver, red, and white for his first exhibition with Nisela Bichimi Gallery. This is titled Number 6033 and I guess that's gonna make it a lot easier for me. All these are basically numbered This is 24 by, if this is 20 by 24 inches. Well, gosh, it looks like he's even painted over one of his rejected painters as another number. 58, oh, it's 06, okay. It's 12 by 12 inches. Uh, I started seeing Andrew's work well, back in the early 80s, and uh, we've covered a couple of his shows. It's 57.89, and this is 24 by 20. Uh, he's an interesting case. He's, uh, I think he lived in New York and uh, worked for... 20 some odd years as a painter and had a pretty good underground reputation and was uh, friends with people like Chris Martin and some of those paint heads. And uh, I think I bumped into his work for the first time at Andre Emmerich on 57th Street in Andre's project space. Hey, this is. 2008, and this is 16 by 20 inches. Then I think the next time I saw his work at a one-man show, he was working with the famous and much-missed Hudson at uh, Feature Gallery. This is 28 by 22 inches. Then he was in the Whitney Biennial, I guess maybe six years ago. And I guess I should fully disclose that he showed at the same gallery I showed with in LA, Daniel Weinberg, and probably is still represented in a way by Daniel. show with Mary Boone this is 20 by 16 so in a lot of ways uh, 
although it's been cooking and simmering for a long time, in a lot of ways he's has had a career that has uh, kept going. And uh, for a New Yorker, he's done pretty well. I mean, he's living in San Francisco now, but as far as the New York art world goes, he's about the only thing he has done is shown with Gagosian. Number 4490. Well, I think the premise of this show is kind of interesting. Sort of ceiling, seeing how you deal with paintings that never seem to coalesce. And well, he's been working on this one since 2005. Okay. Uh, I've also written about. Uh, and talked about the effects of silver and gold and metallics. And, uh, well, Jackson Pollock, I think, maybe was the first person that really kind of popularized the silver paint. 2001 to 2018, so that's only 17 years on that one. Let's see if I can get some dimensions. Eight by 16. And, uh, well, I think one of the things that I enjoy about Andrew is his sense of humor. I was called by a uh, reporter from the New York Times, and she was doing an extended piece on Andrew, and uh, she said, what did I think of his paintings? And I said, well, the reason I like them, 3093. This is from 1995 to 2018. Uh, I thought that his paintings are kind of like visual koans. Is it some kind of a like Zen Buddhist poem? I guess this little little nugget is the oldest piece in the show. This is was started in 1993, so that's. 25 years, something like that. This one was 1995. Although this is a very reduced set of elements as far as the color and the forms, you get an idea of his hello <laughs> I think you get an idea of his uh, kind of creativity this is a an unusual piece 7135 2015 to 2018 I did see uh, a booth, and I can't remember which which one it was, but it was at the uh, Reason Freeze Art Fair up on Randall's Island, and uh, this gallery had a nice selection of some of Andrew's recent paintings, and I was actually I was shocked. This is 6473. Because a lot of his work that I've seen is probably starts out about this size, so that's about 10 by 8 inches, and then it would go up to something maybe this size. I don't know what that is, 16 by 20? And maybe occasionally it would go to maybe 24 inches. But uh, the recent paintings I saw were more like this size. This is 24 by 30, and some were even a little bit larger, I think. Also, I think it's interesting you can see the, uh, the pedimedi, and in a lot of ways, Andrew is a very obsessive painter, We're working on these, uh, scraping them down a little bit, reworking them, and even when he's not working with just the silver, red, and the white, he does have a very limited set of colors that he constantly uses is it's almost like uh, 
the notes on a piano or a certain uh, limited number of sounds that he can kind of orchestrate but he does a wonderful job of uh, getting an incredible amount of mileage out of these 60-47-2014 also I think uh, Andrew has gotten quite a uh, quite a reputation as a almost a painting guru and he goes through a lot of kind of fun and interesting phases 6073 and I would estimate that this one is also probably about 30 by 24 Well, we'll run upstairs and see what's happening with Jack Hanley. This is an exhibition of ceramics. By Roger Herman. I'll read a little bit from the press release. Herman's ceramics can continually shift between abstraction and figuration, pair vivid palettes with dark colors, like these two. This range of technique is held together by just rawness and vibrancy that is inherent to each sculpture. Drips of paint run down the exterior of the hefty vessels. I like the skull. With occasional window-like holes sharply cut open. Now, I was thinking, I was looking at a couple of these, and this is an example. If you could uh, open that up and uh, peel it back and uh, hang it on a wall, you'd have a nice abstract painting. Among the variety of images, the human body is pervasive throughout Herman's sculpture work. Whether it's the recurring vanitas motif of the skull, the body shape of the vessel, or painted faces with protruding noses and ears, their eminent physicality also reflects the corporal act of painting and building the clay. Painted figures and faces call to mind ancient cave paintings, and just like them, they leave their mark and emphasize the presence in its visible materiality. Oh, yeah, and I love the, the insides. Just bumped into a friend, a wonderful painter, Judith Lanier, fellow Brooklynite. She said I had to come in the back room and check out this group of works. Well, I, uh, I love this glazed ceramics, and, uh, but it's not often that I see people that are as uh, talented painter-wise or maybe using color and texture and uh, dripping and splatter 
as Roger here. This is uh, some great stuff. We'll start out looking at this piece. This is untitled. This is 15 by 20 by 20. And I, uh, yeah, I like that uh, the gunmetal gray black and the splatters. Well, these are all untitled, and I guess all I would have to do is. Oops! Somebody spilled the beer. Give you a rough idea of the dimensions. I think that's probably about 17 by 20 by 20. It's 25 by 12 by 12. It's 2017 by 17, 27 by 17 by 17. Uh, actually, this is great because this has a little different um, finish. They don't get explicit with what kind of firings and uh, various things he's doing with his his glazes. Oh, that's kind of nice. Got some kind of a resist going on there, but this has got a very dry surface as opposed to some of these other pieces. This is. 17 by 17 by 20. Also, uh, these are nice. They've got uh, great stuff on the outside and on the inside. Also, some of them are kind of uh, monochrome. So we've got a whole row of these uh, kind of monochrome pieces. And okay, so we've got a female nude, it looks like, in a provocative pose. Skulls. This is nice. We've also got kind of a, uh, so the, the brownish gray overcoat has got green and terracotta colors underneath. Yeah, it would be interesting to know whether these are High fire, low fire, wood fire.
I was a big fan of Peter Volkus, but I don't think that his work actually ever got quite this colorful or painterly. And we'll look at these as our final <laughs> vessels. James Com reporting on Roger Herman Ceramics here at the Jack Hanley Gallery, 327 Broom Street, and we looked at Animasuo, recent paintings at the Michela Biashina Gallery, 327 Broom Street. You can like this, share it, and subscribe. And you can leave your thoughts, ideas, reviews, critiques, talking points below. But help me with this, folks. We always say, thank you, Kate. Thanks, Dan. Thanks.